be refreshed with harmony in the magnificent Peace Park at the Great Stupa. Hi, my name's Elise and I'm going to take you on a tour of the Peace Park at the Great Stupa. A stupa is the most sacred building in Buddhism. It symbolises the enlightened mind and the path to enlightenment. A stupa is also a place to house holy relics of the Buddha and other highly realised beings. And it's open for people of all faiths and religions. You might be wondering why the stupa was built here. Chairman Ian Green was practising Buddhism in Bendigo and his teacher Lama Yeshi laid out the plans on the site in 1981. What makes the Great Stupa unique is it's the largest stupa in the Western world here in Bendigo's distinctive bushland. The Great Stupa is 50 metres square at its base and nearly 50 metres high. It's based on the Great Stupa of Giansi in Tibet and is being built to last 1,000 years. It's home to the Jade Buddha, which is the largest gemstone quality Jade Buddha in the world. It's a place for all cultures and religions to enjoy and the gardens have many interfaith installations. You'll see some of the trees and plants that were chosen here because of the local environment and to provide summer shade and different flowering trees and deciduous trees as well. This is the Chinese redbud flame tree. It was planted as part of the Global Tree Initiative. They have a beautiful pink blossom in spring and these ones have just recently been planted earlier this year. These beautiful stone lanterns actually have come from Vietnam. Eventually at night they'll all be lit and they go down the entire centre path leading right up to the Great Stupa. So these beautiful dry stone walls have been here for a number of years now and they're from a local quarry. They just create a nice beautiful entryway into the Peace Park. I just wanted to remind you all as well that the stupa is pet friendly so you can bring your pets out here as long as they're kept on a leash, go for a walk with your dog or any other pet. There's sort of a mix of different bushes and trees in here just to do with the local environment. So the soil here is mostly clay and rock. So the gardeners have actually had to introduce a lot of soil, a lot of compost, natural waste, and a lot of topsoil to keep these trees alive in here because it's quite a harsh climate. There'd be a mix of native species and a few introduced trees as well. These ones are golden rain trees. Um, they have beautiful autumn foliage. So this is probably the latest installation in the Peace Park. It's called the Baha'i Nine-Pointed Star. So this is one of our interfaith installations representing the Baha'i faith. So you'll see nine different points. It's actually not complete. These plants here will be planted in the ground. And this is a running waterfall, which isn't running quite yet. By the end of the year, it'll be up and running and this whole area will be planted out a bit more as well. This is Kuan Yin. She was actually installed May this year. She stands at a massive seven metres tall. So she was made by a team of sculptors in Vietnam. Then when she arrived here, she was painted by the resident artists here. So she's got a bit of painting in her eyes and then behind her a gold aura as well. It took us about eight years to fund this sculpture. So to get all the sponsors, all the funding ready to be able to complete Quan Yin. We're really happy to have her in the Peace Park now. So this is the selfie rock. This beautiful big rock comes from a local quarry. It's a selfie rock, so you can come and take a seat and take a selfie with Kuan Yin. This is a pomelo tree. It's from a seedling from the first tree that was planted in Australia at the Golden Dragon Museum. Eventually when the tree matures, it'll develop some fruit, which are edible. This statue here is the Four Harmonious Friends, which is a really important teaching in Buddhism. So it's about four unlikely friends, the elephant, the monkey, the rabbit and the bird, all working together. So they're sitting on top of each other to work the fruit that's high up in the tree. And it's a really important representation in, in the Peace Park. We want to t tell tales and represent peace and harmony, and this statue represents that. Through here, we've actually got heaps of beautiful, fragrant, rosemary as well as many different types of lavender as well and then along the back here are emu bushes so there's a few different varieties of emu bushes this time of year is perfect because you get an array of beautiful different colors right in front of the great stupa they're pretty hardy and they do well with the soil here these here are prayer wheels they're made in nepal from copper and they're full of a mantra on mani padme hum which is written on the outside in a tibetan script and it's repeated 20 million times on a script on the inside as well. So when you spin them clockwise, it releases the prayers into the park. This is a Bodhi tree. So it's from the Fiscus or fig family. 
and it's a very sacred tree in Buddhism. So it's the tree that Buddha was sitting underneath when he found enlightenment. And they're cuttings from cuttings from cuttings of that original tree that Buddha was sitting underneath, brought to Australia from India by the Dalai Lama. They're really recognisable by these heart-shaped leaves. They're not really suited to the Australian climate. Normally they'd be a lush, beautiful green all year round. It's a beautiful wishing well here in the park and it just releases a beautiful sound when it's rung that echoes throughout the entire park. This sculpture is the Ikonka, so it's part of the Sikh faith and it was actually unveiled in the Peace Park late last year on the birthday of Guru Nanak. So this is what we call the triple gem Bodhi Cops. So it's uh, three Bodhi trees around a seat here and we intend for people to just come out, sit down and meditate under the trees. At the moment, the Bodhi trees don't have their leaves, but they will be beautiful and lush and in summer. So we encourage you to come out and enjoy this space, sit down and meditate and just relax. There are many other reasons that you can come out to the park, so you can enjoy some yoga. If you've got an exercise group, you can grab them and come and do some exercise in the park as well. Or you can grab some friends, come to the cafe, uh, do a tour around the Peace Park and go inside the stupa and view beautiful holy relics and statues, as well as the Jade Buddha. This is what we call the Tumo waterfall. So Tumo, the dragon, Tumo stands for inner fire. He actually used to be part of our festival of light or illuminate festival. And he used to breathe fire from one of the levels of the stupa. And then the artist decided to donate him to the stupa here. So we created a waterfall around him. Illuminate is one of our major festivals and it celebrates the birth, death and enlightenment of Buddha. It happens usually in, in May and it's an amazing light festival. We have lots of light projections on the stupa that tell the story of the Buddha, food trucks, cultural performances and it's a beautiful time. At the entire Peace Park is lit up with different light sculptures. It's just a time for everyone, family, friends, pets to come together and enjoy the peaceful surrounding. We have two other festivals which are Lunar New Year around January, February and also Vegetarian Festival which is normally in October. So Vegetarian Festival is all about loving food and loving animals so it is a great day for people to come out with their pet, enjoy lots of vegetarian food. We explore vegetarian food in many different cultures and it's just a really fun family friendly day for everyone to come and enjoy the beautiful surroundings. St Francis was donated to us by the Catholic Diocese of Sandhurst and consecrated here by the Bishop. And you can see in his hand here that people come and make offerings to the different sculptures in the park. So some people have left some, some change and some chocolate there for St Francis. So as you can see, there are many different types of areas in the Peace Park. There's big open spaces that allow for people to just relax, bring a picnic blanket. And there's some other areas where it's more bushy and it allows for more shade where you can just sit on a park bench and do some reading. A peace park is all about promoting peace and harmony, so it's a really inclusive space to welcome everyone, so people from all different types of cultural backgrounds, religions, just a place for everyone to enjoy. This here is the Golden Thai Buddha. It was donated to us by a benefactor. The eyes have been painted by Lobsang Konchok, who is a Buddhist monk really well trained in Tibetan artistry as well. Because the Peace Park is located in the beautiful Aussie bushland you'll sometimes spot a kangaroo in the wild you know early in the morning or in the evening. In case you don't we have a kangaroo here with a little joey in its pouch it was painted by some artists here. So we have three rows of trees that surround the entire stupa. The first level down here is Chinese elm. This one here is Manchurian pear and then the next level up is crepe myrtle. All these trees are memorial trees, so people are able to place their ashes underneath the trees. The walls will eventually go all around the stupa as well, and people can have their ashes placed in the walls. These trees were chosen with the landscape manager, Justin, along with the chairman, Ian Green, as appropriate trees for the memorials, just because of the way they grow and because of the soil here as well. We just miss the beautiful blooming Manchurian pears, which have a beautiful white blossom. Crepe myrtle also have a beautiful pink blossom as well. On the top level of the stupid, we've got these rose bushes. So there's Fraser Yellow and Camp David Red that alternate. These rose bushes were chosen by the spiritual director, Lama Zopa Rinpoche, and eventually they'll go all the way around the stupa. So there'll be about 60 bushes in total. These two statues either side of me are Tibetan snow lions. So they're prote the protectors of the great stupa. They've been painted by the same Buddhist monk who painted the eyes on the golden Thai Buddha in the garden that we saw 
earlier and he painted them in traditional Tibetan colours. Construction for the Great Stupa started in 2003 when their foundations were laid. It's now been 17 years in construction and it's estimated it will take another 50 years to complete. So far, the stupa and the gardens have cost $10 million and we expect to spend many millions to complete the whole project. The project includes not only the stupa and the beautiful peace gardens, but also a cafe, a restaurant, a hotel and a village, and further down the track, a primary school. The whole project is self-sustainable, meaning we'll have our own water and sewage systems as well as a solar farm for electricity. You may think the stupa looks complete, but we suspect that it'll take another 50 years to complete. This includes 80 shrine rooms that go around the outside of the building and all the statues and artworks to go inside. The best time of year to visit the Peace Park is a really tough call. In autumn, there's beautiful autumn foliage from the deciduous trees. And in summer is when the Bodhi trees are in full bloom and have a beautiful lush green. But my favorite time of year is spring when there's a beautiful array of colors on display from all the flowering bushes. Thank you for joining me on this tour today. We look forward to seeing you soon with your friends, family and pets. We want to see how you spend your time here. So share your photos using hashtag Great Stupid Bendigo and hashtag Explore Bendigo.